Um, Cloud Kingdom is actually a map that gets vetoed out by a lot of Zerg players, and the reason why is actually because of uh, like two base all ins or mortal all ins are actually really strong on this map. So, uh, this is a, a map that Johnny Record may not like, but he's going to have to be very careful on what Naniwa's going to do. Absolutely. Now, after Naniwa opened up with that DT opening, do you believe that he's going to uh, go for something a little more standard, go for a forge expansion on a map like this? I think so. Um, I mean, this is a map that Naniwa can do both on. Uh, I guess it's up to him and how he feels he's going to play it out. And we already see the plan going down. So he actually is just going to go for a very similar play again. This could actually also mean, still, that he goes double pile on Nexus, a build that, you know, Sase, um, a teammate of Naniwa, uses a lot also. But most likely, it's going to be just once again Gateway Expand. And we'll have to see how uh, Johnny Wrecker responds to this. He seemed to do fairly well and, and respond to that pylon block with his 15 spawning pool. Uh, in game number one. Something interesting that I found uh, in the pre-game notes was that uh, for a while after TSL3, Naniwa introduced his achievements as the TSL3 loser. So clearly took that loss in TSL3 to heart and uh, he's shown that he really wants to come back and prove himself here in TSL4. Uh, so it's really surprising to me that he fell there in game number one. And he's going to have to fight back now. He's going to have to use that experience, use that determination that everybody knows Naniwa is one of the most passionate StarCraft 2 players out there. He's gonna really going to have to focus on pulling this series back. Losing map number one is okay. Losing map number two is not really acceptable in a best of five because that means your opponent's on match point for three games in a row and anything can happen to just grab a map by uh, an all-in, a, a luck move, or something along those lines. So Naniwa has to be very careful with this next map yeah absolutely and when you look at the statistics of starcraft 2 and players coming back from an o2 deficit it's it's really next to impossible it's uh your back's against the wall you know you start to get nervous you you question your decisions not a good spot to be in we see naniwa once again going for that very quick cybernetics course skipping the first zealot and uh kind of a mirror of game number one doing the pylon block two drones coming down to deal with that yeah, Naniwa just likes the option here to have the Cybernetics cooldown down faster because, it, like I said, it allows you to go for an early attack or some form of tech. And this is something he's been using a lot recently. It's how he managed to take games away from Don Regu in the GSL round of eight as well, really catching his opponent by surprise. It means that the Zerg player now actually needs to take gas really early on because he doesn't know which it's going to be. Is it going to be an early attack? Is it going to be tech? And the Zerg player is all of a sudden... And, you know, he can't be super greedy with his build. He can't take that early third hatcher anymore. And that starts to slow his opponent's economy down, which in, in Naniwa's eyes seems to be the best approach to this matchup at the moment. And uh, Johnny Recco being uh, very, very uh, dangerous here with his Overlord. Look at the timing on this. He knows when that Stalker could come out, even though it was Chrono Boost. Gets it over to this little ridge. Not even going to take any damage on that. He wants to maximize the time that he's sitting there watching over the natural of Naniwa. And this time Naniwa doesn't, he actually gets in another, uh, another pylon here. So he's actually at 2634. So he's actually gonna pylon before the next, uh, before the Nexus. So a little bit of a weird change there by uh, Naniwa. It means that he's gonna grab the second gas and be able to produce probes immediately behind it. But the Nexus is slightly delayed, which hurts his longer term plan, but helps his gas income as he's now able to get that out a little bit faster. Absolutely. Naniwa out on the map with the Stalker going to clear the Watchtower. is going to put a little bit of pressure on that natural, make Johnny Reco uncomfortable. He doesn't get trapped into making too many lings, just going to make an extra pair. He's got that Metabolic Boost at about 33%, and uh, Naniwa going to bring that Stalker back. He doesn't want to let any lings into his main base like game number one. Doesn't want to give the option to Johnny Reco to, sh to uh, identify what his game plan here is in, in game number two. And so let's, it's kind of all down to Naniwa and what decisions he's going to take now. And there's one coming out immediately oh, wow. as he starts the Stargate inside. Um, we're going to have to see, is this going to be a single Void Ray into Phoenixes? Is it going to be more so than Void Rays? But usually the typical response that we're going to see from Naniwa here is Void Ray into Phoenixes potentially. Maybe mm -hmm. forcing his opponent to make a composition uh, that Colossus would be very strong towards. Or the other option for Naniwa to bank on is to use the Void Ray and Phoenixes defensively after a little harass to take an uh, to take an easy third base uh, and protect them with that absolutely johnny reco has now taken his third uh on at about 44 supplies he's uh really cut his queens here so if there's an all-out assault with phoenix void ray on the third it may be oh okay looks like that option has been completely ruled out Naniwa now chronoing out uh, phoenix's first so it's not going to be yeah. void raid with phoenix support 
Yeah, that's super interesting. This is something that I, I've actually tried a couple of times myself here to skip the Void Ray and just go for the Phoenixes. I, I feel that Void Rays are almost becoming redundant due to the amount of Queens that people make. Um, you know, the defense is really solid right. against Stargate openings nowadays. But with Phoenixes alone, you can do so much damage in terms of just getting in a Blitz attack, picking up drones, picking up Queens, and getting out ASAP. But Johnny Rico, or Reco as you want to call him, actually sees the Stargate. Uh, he doesn't know if it's a Void Ray though. That's one thing that's different. But I think with the tell of that Phoenix on the natural, seeing it's right. out so early on, probably could tell him that there is no Voidry coming. In response, he's gotten uh, an Evolution Chamber on the way uh, on the way down, has not started a Roach Warren, so we'll have that at least, should he need to put down Spore Colonies to defend against this. And two extra Queens in production, the Void Ray's now flying over to that third base. Only two here, and a Queen has secured the third base, so it looks like Johnny Reco has put a solid defense up. Ah, uh, he may lose that queen though if that third phoenix gets there. Um, especially because the spore curl's not quite there yet. And I think that's exactly what Nani was going to do. Uh, meanwhile, there are a lot of links in the middle of the map too, but that queen is picked up and it will go down here. And he will be able to escape just before the spore curl does or starts to deal its damage. With uh, Johnny Reco had two extra queens in production, which are just completing now, so he probably won't miss that queen too much, but still some solid damage done by Naniwa. Now harassing the main base, trying to deal damage on those overlords, but look at this, actually two spore crawlers in the main base. Uh, do you think that's too uh, reactionary by Johnny Reco? I think it's fine to do so, um, especially if your opponent's dedicating to like pure phoenixes, because it is a little bit weird like that, and it knows that uh, he's looking to get in, do damage fast, and the extra spore crawler is well worth it, because all he's doing is really building drones behind this. Uh, but look at the response from Naniwa. He's actually thrown down the robotics bay. Wow. And, you know, it's looking rather than using these units defensively to take a third base. He's thrown his resources into Colossus Tech super early on here. And, you know, he could try a two base attack, but most likely will start to build up the Colossus army, build up the Colossus so he can start to have a really, really strong mid game attack. Yeah, this is kind of extremely old school, going for that Phoenix Colossus and, and not even using your gateway units. Naniwa being active with this Phoenix is trying to harass down, but Johnny Reco with that uh, second Spore Crawler, uh, you know, is being really strong in his defense. And look at this, he's not going for a Hydra response. He's actually getting an Infestation Pit, starting those Pathogen Glands. Yeah, Pathogen Glands uh, is basically the key in beating Phoenixes like this. Uh, Corruptors will never catch them, Hydras will just get picked up and die, so right. you just land the Fungal and they're all trapped and die the Queens anyway. So that's what he'll be looking to do with that. Meanwhile, Johnny Reco is using an Overseer on the Natural. He's actually trying to find out what the hell's going on, and that's <laughs> why the Phoenixes are immediately trying to prevent him from scouting the tech, to scouting his opponent. He doesn't know about the Robotics Bay and will never find out either. So the Phoenixes do, uh, you know, prevent that from happening. And now Naniwa, well, actually the Colossus is revealed on that third base, but Naniwa will now slowly take that base. And Naniwa following up by adding two more warp gates, so he's not going to stick to just high tech. He's going to have the backbone of a few gateway units at least. Naniwa, as you mentioned, driving away that Overseer, placing down the third base. T taking a look at the income tab, Johnny Reco doesn't have as much of a drone lead as you may expect. Only 65 Harvesters versus 56 uh, at the 11 minute mark, or 1140 now. So not a huge income lead there. No, it's not massive right now because he, I mean, he's had to build a lot of spore crawls and so on, so his drones kept on going down, and he just built a bunch of spines too. Uh, but right now, I expect that the hive has to really begin any second now. Uh, right. He's got the gas for it. He's taken his fourth base. He's setting up defense to protect the hive from being built. But now the fungals are out, and the, fe the phoenixes could get shot down from the sky. Naniwa ha is no longer able to move around, pick up queens like this, because if he does, then the, the especially with the corruptors coming out. This could be disastrous if Naniwa loses these Phoenixes oh, for free. Naniwa does, does grab. Pick up. Wow, he grabs the two Infestors, gonna be able to shut those down before the Corruptors are out. Now they're trying to get over there. Able to take it, one Phoenix, one Phoenix does go down, but the two Infestors for one Phoenix, very nice trade. Naniwa would take that all day. I'm really surprised that we don't see a Twilight Council down at all because Naniwa's upgrades are stuck at just plus one. Uh, he's not really continuing oh, to wow. upgrade. I don't really know what he's looking to do here unless he's, you know, not even thinking past the 20 minute mark here, past the 15 minute mark, and just is going to chronoboost out another Colossus. He's at three, he's about to be at four, he's throwing down extra gateways, but it's very, very, very strange not to see the Twilight Council or an additional Forge, and uh, I think that's going to hurt him a lot here because, of course, his units are so weak. Yeah, absolutely, and if this goes to a Hive game, then he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, Johnny Reco is going to have a massive advantage. So I've got to imagine he's trying to hit a timing before then. Taking a look at the Hive for Johnny Reco, just about 50% now. 
Yeah, 50%. So that basically is the ticking bomb in this game. If that if that goes off and the, and the hive units are out, then especially with a very weak army, the, you know, Naniwa could very easily lose the game number two here as well. But look at Johnny Reco. He has got a Ling counterattack set up at the north side. In case Naniwa moves out, he moves in with these Lings. The upgrades are starting to kick in for Johnny Reco as well, getting that plus one melee attack. But the Hive is so close to finishing. The Creator Spy will start as well. One weakness we can see from Johnny Reco is that he doesn't have any defense on the, the, uh, the west wing of his base, right. on the natural location. There's no spines, there's no spores. He's all about defending this fourth base, which could could easily be exploited. And Naniwa trying to get in before that time go bomb goes off. As you mentioned, the hive is now complete. No greater spire started. Oh, there it goes, just as I said. Johnny Reco has started it. Naniwa needs to be aggressive and begin pushing forward. Uh, Link counterattack going in, but look at this block off. Warp in, gonna be able to shut that down with the cannon and the nice uh, pylon placement. Naniwa now pushing forward to the fourth. Really needs to shut that down before this greater spire finishes. Indeed he does, but there's a lot of corruptors here. And Corruptors will immediately pick off this Colossus. There's no blinky if the Stalkers don't have plus two or plus three. So that means the Corruptors uh, indirectly will survive longer here. So Naniwa is not going to attack down the ramp. He's going to look for the weakest spot, which is, of course, down the south side as well. Another area that Johnny Reco has not protected. There's the War Prison backing up the army as well. And very shortly, we will see an engagement here from Naniwa. But he's got to be so careful. Once the Colossus go down, this army is nothing. Yeah, and, and Johnny Reco able to snipe one of those Colossi. He's now repositioned a few spine crawlers to just give him some sort of a backbone to try to defend against this. And Naniwa kind of caught here in the bottom right. It's so far if he runs, wants to run away here. And that Greater Spire now at 85%, just 15 more seconds before being completed. And here comes the attack from Naniwa. And the Fungals land down, the Lings and Rotis come in, the Colossus are getting focused down immediately by the Corruptors. And if the Colossus goes down, the units aren't even a plus two. Lings and Roaches come from behind as well. The last Colossus is about to fall, but it's doing enough damage. But, oh, the blink back, and Naniwa's, Naniwa's in trouble again here, and he loses a massive army, like we saw previously. And once that army's down, there's no fourth base to fall back on. There's no high tech, there's no plus uh, three upgrades or something. So Naniwa's in trouble if he doesn't break his opponent down. Absolutely, with only Gateway in. Oh, big fungal on those Zell. It's going to be surrounded and e instantly taken out. Blink now complete, so Naniwa able to retreat. And he has moved on to plus two attack. He's wor working on plus three, but he's only on Gateway units. He doesn't have that massive two, two or three, three upgrades to really strengthen uh, his Gateway units. And Johnny Reco is on one, one himself with high tech. Naniwa isn't even looking for a fourth base. He's up against it here. Yeah, he's up against it once again, and there's a lot of Broodlords out now. There's eight Broodlords in total, another one being morphed out. I mean, I'm looking at Naniwa's army. He doesn't have plus three. He has a very small amount of Stalkers. He's trying to get the Fleet Beacon to get a Mothership out. He does right. have Temporal Archives down as well, but that's a lot of gas spent and spread out across many different angles, many different sorts of tech. So in the uh, the short of it all is that he actually doesn't have a very focused army. It's going to be spread out. It's going to be pretty weak, especially with Johnny Reco making a movement out. Yeah, we've got the Broodlords and Investors moving forward and a ton of units moving over to that fourth base. Gonna be able to shut that down fairly easily. Naniwa's gonna have to give it up. And he is now moving out, and this is gonna be very dangerous here. Naniwa blinks under, gets a Broodlord down, gets a second one. A decent engagement for Naniwa, but he doesn't have enough upgrades. He doesn't have a big enough army. And just the sheer amount of units that Johnny Reco has is pulling absolutely everything down. The Corruptors bring down the Colossus as well. And all of a sudden, Naniwa's army melts incredibly fast here. And you can hear the alarm going off in Naniwa's head, telling him to get out of there as the Zerg units are swarming up. Uh, it's, uh, Johnny Reco is now taking control of that high ground, with Naniwa not even able to do anything to push back that army. That's going to be so difficult for him to deal with. More Broodlords being morphed up there. Yeah, and the alarms are sounding all around the three bases of Naniwa. They are in trouble, and they know it, as more and more Broodlords are more. Six Broodlords in total now being added on to the pack, and that's basically 12 Broodlords almost out. A blink underneath to try and get this army down, but there's just too oh, many wow. links, too many Broodlords. That was an ambitious blink. Naniwa knowing he had to do something. Plus three is finished, but the Broodlords able to take it out, and unfortunately, he calls GG with... Uh leaving his parting words.